Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, that should be most people now, so we can make a start. So to start off, a thesis inspired me. Everyone should do a little bit of exercise before you start learning. So please can everyone press Z on their keyboard to dance. Press Z. Can anyone hear me? No one's doing it? Oh, no. we are? We can't see anything. No, it's not working. Oh, well. Anyway, you should see your avatar dancing when you're pressing Z. And you can also press uh, X to throw stuff, I believe, X. No, I can't see my own person. Yeah, if you stop screen sharing, we'll be able to see ourselves. Yeah, everyone's doing it now. Cool. Okay. Right. Good. Um, so thank you very much for coming to the second SPAM Summer School, uh, Introduction to Ancient Metagenomics. So this morning, we're going to start with a little introduction from myself and Tina. Um, and then we will have the first lecture. Um, let's start, let's uh, do the little introduction, organizational sort of details uh, for the summer school. So hopefully the slide has changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Right. So as you already signed up, you probably know this, but just to recap, the purpose of this summer school is to um, help you go through the main steps of any ancient metagenomic bioinformatic workflow. Um, based on the ex sort of the expertise of the lecturers, the majority of the lecturers, we will be focusing on host um, associated ancient metronomics. So typically this means stuff from archaeological material, from bones and, and so on. Um, but many of the concepts can apply to um, other areas of, of ancient metronomics. And the course will consist of both lectures, typically in the mornings, normally about two hours and then, or an hour and a half rather. And then we, you have the afternoons, uh, sorry, morning, sorry, second half of the mornings and the afternoons um uh, practical sessions where you should have now uh, on friday i think it was received an email with a link to a particular uh, vm node um but we can copy, uh, check that a bit later uh, at the end of this uh, the first lecture um and finally um in the evenings or so afternoons after evening the last session we have more open free informal sessions where we just discuss us various aspects of things like project management or you know have a little q a or you can come and for um, advice from the particular people who's been talking about the day and um finally the course is aimed at msc and so very good msc and for early year phd students um ideally people with data already um but it's not uh, uh, restricted just to that but that is the majority in the level that we're talking about um throughout the course and so by the end of the course, we hope that you will have an understanding of how to effectively carry out the major bioinformatic components of any metronomic uh, project. But also in an open and transparent manner, we have big emphasis on open source, open access, these things like this to try and share as much as possible we can to help everybody um, make progress in their uh, field of research. So we will not go into all the minute details of all of these things. Um, but we hope that this will be a starting point that launches you into um, carrying out your research and know where to look or how to, or things to consider while doing the, your research. Um, if you didn't already know um, about SPAM itself, we are a community of researchers, um, mostly students, so sort of a grassroots thing, um, focusing on intermetronomics. Uh, the aim is to basically collaborate, uh, to share knowledge, work on collaborative projects, um, and trying to organize ways of coming together to basically discuss our knowledge, our problems, you know, a bit of an agony aunt style thing. Um, and we have different ways that we communicate. So if you proceed with ancient metronomic in your PhD, for example, we highly recommend you join us. There's, it's completely free. There's no limitations of how much you should or shouldn't do. Um, but we have a Slack channel. There's also a mailing list. We're also on Twitter or X, whatever it's called now. And we will be soon moving to Mastodon, uh, given all of that stuff. And so if you're interested in joining and you've not already joined, please go to the, the link over here, the Spam community. Ooh, we can't see my cursor. There we go. I hope you can see that. Anyway, um, go to the link over there and there's links to joining these various things. We also have a dedicated uh, Slack channel for um, the, the summer school, which is something like 2023 summer school, something like that. It's in one of the emails. Um, so please join that there, and you can also use that to ask questions and so on. Um, if you, if you, uh, you know, you have problems with your microphone or something like this, you can also use the Gather Town chat. But generally, we'll be monitoring Slack rather than the Gather Town chat. 
I'd also like to say thank you to all the support and all the um, funding that we have for the summer school. So the main um, financial support is from the Bernadine Stiftung, uh, awarded to Tina and Pierre, Professor Pierre, Pierre Stahlholt in the Hakai in Jena. But also most of the teachers and the um, infrastructure comes from SPAM itself, but also the computing infrastructure you'll be using today will be uh, hosted on the Denby um, bioinformatics uh, infrastructure, uh, which is really cool and nifty. It's basically free cloud computing to any academic researcher in Germany. Um, and then institutional support, we have the Leibniz HKI, the JSMC, which some people here the, are part of the, the graduate school. Also MAM in, in Harvard University and also the Max Planck Institute, which where me and the other teachers from today are currently sitting. Uh, we are all academics, we like data, so a little bit about you and us. Um, of the participants, we had 100 applicants, or just over 100 applicants to the, the summer school. And um, we originally aimed for 25 places, but because there were so many applicants and a very, a quite a few good people, we've increased this slightly to 32 places. And you come from across the world, from uh, three major continents, including the Americas, um, Europe, Africa, and also uh, East or Asia, such as East Asia. Um, we are quite uh, female heavy this time, or woman heavy, depending on, on how I can't remember how I, I phrase the question now. So the majority being uh, people who identify as women. You're mostly PhD students, but with a few uh, MSc students, um, sort of one uh, two to one ratio there, and then one person outside of that. And also, because I am a computer nerd, I also wanted to know what operating systems people were using. This is actually quite important when it comes to bioinformatics. Um, and the majority of people are using Windows, and this has actually increased since the last summer school, where it was relatively equal, um, and a slightly few people using uh, Apple Macs. And unfortunately, the, the operating system actually best for bioinformatics is still the smallest proportion there. I don't blame you, but you will be learning a lot about Unix and Linux uh, during this summer school. Oops. Uh, and your instructors, again, quite a diverse of people, um, mostly based in Europe, but we have people from US, like Dina. Um, and uh, we have three new people, three? Yeah, three new people uh, this year versus last year. And that will be Miriam, who is based in Austria, and then Robin and Kevin, who are both based here. Um, and we work spanning from uh, microbiome research to pathogen research and to sediment DNA. So we have quite a broad range of expertise here. Um, and so you're welcome to ask questions specifically, depending on what you're working on yourself. Uh, some basic organizational things. Firstly, code of conduct. Um, it's very important that we work in a very cohesive, collaborative, friendly environment. And so attendance of this school does require uh, sort of following the code of conduct that, that we have on the SPAM website. Um, so please do check that. There is a too long, didn't read, uh, both here on the slide and on the website. So just make sure you are aware of that. Um, but if you have any issues, your first contact would be myself or Tina. But there's also other con um, code of conduct officers, so safety officers, which is Betsy Shreya, Ida, Gunnar, and Nasreen, who you can also contact depending on who you feel like, or feel more comfortable talking to. You have all made it to Gather Town, uh, which is again another nerdy uh, preference of, of mine. Um, so it's basically, as you can see, a bit like Zoom, but throwing in sort of Pokemon slash Zelda Game Boy nerds uh, sort of environment. The nice thing about it is you feel a bit more, you know, um, in place, uh, you have an avatar, you're feeling you're in a group with a, uh, with a group of people rather than just lots of black screens. Um, you're already here already, of, of course, and um, there are instructions on the website where you can check if you, if you need um, or get stuck. The, probably the most useful thing is if you get stuck in a bunch of people who are moving and you can't walk around, if you hold down G, you turn into a ghost and you can walk through people. So if you get stuck, um, you have that, which in fact, I have these notes here, which I forgot about. So arrow keys to move around, G to become a ghost, X to interact with objects if necessary. Etic, in terms of etiquette, please use your real name, um, or the, at least the name you signed up with to the summer school. That would be helpful. You can edit this in your bio name in the bottom left-hand corner of your window. This is useful for us to tick off uh, who is attending so we can keep track that you attend everything and you will get all of your credits at the end. Um, also, yeah, try keep your cameras on because it's more easy for people, for the teachers to actually follow 
are people following or not? Um, but mic off unless you have a question. These you might see this orange pedestals, for example, over here where I'm standing, and also here. Um, these is where you can stand and it will progress the whole room. So generally, in most rooms, if you have a question, you can come to these um, orange places to ask, so everyone can hear you. And finally, yeah, if you're using OSX and your um, your laptop turns into a uh, so using a Mac and your laptop turns into a jet plane, we recommend using the desktop app rather than the browser because whatever reason, there's an optimization thing. I don't know if it's got better, but last year that was a problem. Um, and finally, yes, please make sure if your browser asks for requests to uh, do screen sharing, please actually uh, allow that because that would be useful for TAs helping you if you have, get stuck or have problems. So in terms of the schedule, um, like I said, we're running from, uh, in the emails, we're running from nine to five German time, split up into a morning lecture, two practicals in the morning and afternoon, and finally this round table, more open discussion in the afternoons. Um, you've seen the schedule, some changes from last year, if you had seen that from last year or interested, is that we're not running a functional genomics session because there wasn't as much interest. Um, and instead we've placed it with two other things. We're gonna have, uh, um, one sort of practical on decontamination and authentication of ancient DNA, so a dedicated one, um, and also a more dedicated um, session on engineering pipelines. Um, the only thing that may change is that the authentication and the de decontamination session may switch with the phylogenomics. Uh, I just need to check with the, the, the instructors for those. Another slight difference is that rather than just slides as we had last year, we're going to be actually trying to work across upon a textbook that we are developing at the same time as writing the um, doing the summer school. Um, we will be more group led, uh, so you'll be sort of working together rather than just a lecture based system as well. Both the practicals or for, the, for the practicals rather. However, we will have the slides available. We will also have recordings which go on on YouTube like last year. And also these walkthroughs that are on the textbook, wrong screen again, on the textbook, um, they are still in draft state in some cases. They are not cleaned up, but they will at least give you the material you've worked with um, throughout this summer school uh, this week. Um, and last couple of things, you should have received an email. So you should have already signed up, I should say, and I, I have confirmed everyone has now signed up, but you should have received an email on Friday with a link to your node. It should be a URL such as simplevm.denby.de, um, school 23 and then your name. If you click on that, it will ask you to log in with your Denby uh, login, which you should have signed up for already. Then you will reach another login for something called Apache Guacamole, which you see here. And the username and password for this is both Denby. You should then when you log in there, then you should actually see a screen like this, a desktop, which is where we will be doing all the practical sessions on. If for whatever reason it asks you for a password for the Ubuntu user, you can type in this password here. So I'd recommend writing this down. I'll give people 10 seconds to do this. However, there is a sticky note on the desktop once you log in the first time, which also has this. But if you just don't that, you shouldn't have to. I think I've turned off all of the authentication things, but just in case. But that password is only once you're in the, uh, the environment. To get into the environment, it's the Apache Guacamole login, and that's Denby Denby. You should also, as requested in the first uh, organization email, have a GitHub account. So if you do that, go to github.com. If you're Sorry, if you've not done that already, go to github.com and sign up. And also, um, you don't have to do this for the summer school, but you can get a free education discount, which includes a free pro account for the entirety of your uh, research or your PhD, for example, which gives you things like private repositories and things like that, which is very nice. In terms of attendance, at ECTS and certificates, you can get ECTS points if you're in Europe for the course. Um, and if you're, for example, in, um, in the US or North America, you can get a certificate from Harvard University or you will get both, I think we, we said last time. So depending on which, which what university accepts, you can get this to prove that you attended. So we will be recording attendance, um, and you'll only be awarded if you attend for the vast majority of the course. So if you have like a doctor's appointment or something like this, or kids' problems, then that's fine. But we are expecting the majority of the course to be attended to get the ECS. 
Uh, this I've already described. So we have the new sessions. We're not doing the functional profiling this year. Um, practical sessions, though, like I said, will be group guided. But that means that when you go through the textbook, if you see a box that says self-guided data, like self-guided or data preparation, something like that, you do not have to run this. We had a problem with one of the instructors who, did, who didn't read this. Um, you don't need to do these steps. We have downloaded all the data for you. you we've set everything up for you already on the nodes. Um, they are collapsed for a reason. Do not run those, otherwise you may come across problems. Um, another thing, and this is going to be important more for when you do the practical sessions later on, is if you're using a web browser, it is better to use a Chromium-based thing. So this is Chrome, Firefox, uh, Opera or Brave, Microsoft Edge, and things like this. The reason why is copying and pasting in Firefox is a bit more difficult. It is possible, but it's more involved. So if you want to be able to just copy and paste directly from your laptop into the desktop environment during the practical sessions, Chrome will be nice to do this. If you try to do this in Firefox, it will likely not work. You have to open a special um, sidebar using control called shift, copy the text into a text box there, then shut the sidebar, and then within the node, you can, you can paste it. It sounds very involved. Uh, we can also come back to this later if necessary. You can also actually open the text book in the browser on your node and copy and paste from there. That also works. But just to let you know, if you come across problems copy and pasting in Firefox, that will be why. So today, we will be having a lecture from me uh, on an introduction to NGS data, so how NGS sequencing works. Then we'll be having a practical session um, on the introduction to the Unix command line. Very, very, very basic, but just helps get everyone up to speed. And that'll be by Ida and Theseus. And then we'll have the first part of a two-part session on an introduction to R and Tidyverse, or if you're uh, familiar with R already, Python and Pandas. And that will be hosted by Clemens for R and myself as backup, and then Kevin and Robin. And then finally, um, we'll have some roundtable introductions with myself, Tina. This is an open, sort of, you know, more informal thing uh, right at the end.